see everybody here and thank and, uh, my brother for giving us this opportunity to come together. He also wanted me to speak uh, really briefly on unity. And isn't it amazing when you look around and you see how many folk come together and they come together for the right reason, do the right thing? You ought to clap yourself for that. It has always been a, an art of war to divide and conquer. That's right. And if, if, as long as we stay divided, we get nothing done. So it's easy for the enemy to come in and do whatever the enemy does because we are divided. But when we come together, I'm telling you, we can come together and, uh, and we can just break uh, these walls of racial prejudice and we can break these walls of, of these church denominations of religion and we can come together for the right reason, for the right thing. The right thing always happens. I, I don't know about you, but you're, 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 the water that we deal with really don't have racial preference and don't have religion preference.
the, the people who have been victimized by this and who have continued to fight back are my heroes, and that's all of you. So i just like to say that I'm one of the lawyers uh, who's handling a class action case on behalf of the victims of this, of this lawsuit. Someday, somehow, there may be some form of compensation for people who've been injured, damaged, whose property has been uh, destroyed and devalued by what uh, the state of Michigan has done to everybody in this room. Someday. But before that day comes, one of the great things about this lawsuit is that we will be able to force people to come into a room and take an oath to tell the truth uh, at, the, at the penalty of perjury. And to answer hard questions, you have to answer this question. Yes, sir. And then we'll come up with some answers and not the nonsense, the shilly shallying, the wiggling, the weaseling that we've been seeing for the past since forever around here. Then we can get at least answers, and once we have those answers, we can demand justice. Now, this is a case against the state of Michigan. Everybody in this room knows that the decision was made by the state of Michigan. It was made by the emergency managers who were imposed upon this community by the state of Michigan. In law, we call those people agents of the state of Michigan. But everybody in this room knows the real word for them is puppets. Yes. Right? Yes. That's right. And those puppets are going to have to learn to talk, and they will talk, and they're going to come up with some truth. So, um, now, <laughs> some of my clients in the room, I'm not going to introduce them or identify them or embarrass anybody in this room today. I just want to say people who have stepped forward are brave and courageous, and I have nothing but the greatest respect for all of you. Uh, our firms are the Goodman Hurwitz firm in Detroit, the Pitt McGee firm in Oil Oak, and for Shell Young here in Flint, uh, a very young but incredibly courageous lawyer who I look to for leadership. So uh, I, I'm here to answer questions. If people have questions, come and talk to me. I'll be here. I'll stay as long as anybody wants me to. Um, our telephone number. Uh, if anyone wants to give us a call, we're anx anxious to talk to people who have information. We're anxious to answer questions. We have a website. Uh, call 248-398-9800 to get uh, answers or provide information. We have people who are answering those calls and taking that information. And you can also contact us through our website. Repeat. But 248-398-9800. Zero, zero. Thank you. Um, I just want to say one other thing. Law uh, is a tricky, a tricky matter. We are suing the one case that we've already started as a lawsuit brought under the Constitution of the United States. And what we say in that lawsuit is that the state of Michigan, public officials, have violated your rights by creating and imposing a danger and a hazard on you that was totally unnecessary, that is culpable beyond words, and that for which there is no excuse whatsoever, and it is the people of this community who are targeted. That's what that lawsuit says. Whether someday we can get justice will depend upon the, ju the system of justice in this country, and it's up and down. And I, I'm not here to pretend to justify some of the things that the American courts and legal system have done Sometimes it's been outrageous, sometimes it's been courageous, sometimes it's done the right thing and sometimes not. But we're here to tell you that we're here to fight. And we're here to fight for you and with you. Uh, I'm going to give you my email address, and if you email me, I will uh, forward all the information to you. It is B. Goodman, Bill Goodman is my name, B. Goodman, B G O O D M A N, at Goodman. Hurwitz, H-U-R-W-I-T-Z, dot com. Uh, my name is Arthur Wood. We are here, you know, me, myself, I don't like to protest and march without, a, without it being solution-driven. If there is no solutions behind it, I don't want to do it. We have asked. We asked for over 17 months. We are here to stand up and let the nation and people in, in the nation know that we are here demanding 
not asking anymore. My name is Arthur Woods, and I'm a veteran. I'm a 10th agent veteran. I get 110 days to go. I am comfortable with my living. My wife might not like it. No, but I'm, I'm comfortable with mine. If I can get more, she probably wants me to get more, but I'm comfortable with mine. We're content. We're able to pay our bills. We're able to put food in the refrigerator. We're able to go on trips when we want to. I'm content with that. I don't need to live in a $2.8 million house. I don't need to buy a $150,000 car. I want my brothers to be able, my sisters to be able to smile right on with me and be able to do the same things that I'm doing. So I don't need any more. But we have some monsters that do. Look who you look at as a leader. Do they walk like you walk? Do they talk like you talk? Do they stand behind walls and expect you to come to them instead of them coming to you? That's what we're doing right now. All right? We got to start. Discipleship, a lot of people say, oh, man, that's not my assignment. Discipleship is your assignment. It is. You move from the hood. You go to the source creek. You go out to Grand Blank. But when you was on the street doing your thing, Beavers was, was uh, shooting every weekend, but you was in line to stand there. You wasn't afraid of anything. When you sold drugs, you wasn't afraid of anything. When you get in church, all of a sudden you're afraid. How was that? I'm not saying too bad about any pastor. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not afraid. They tell me not to help veterans. That's, that's what I started out doing was helping veterans. I started out helping veterans. They called me up to Detroit and told me I better stop or they're going to make my life a living hell. Well, while I was in prison, God gave me a sign. And my sign was to come out here and help. Don't charge because he will bless me. Don't look for anything because he will bless me. So now I'm out here helping these people. I don't want anything in return. All I want is a smile and a testimony. That's all I want. And if people can't look to that, man, there's something wrong with them. They need to check self. Because we had this title ship instead of leadership. That's right. Check it at the door. Check it at the door. All I'm going to do is help. That's it. I'm not here. I'm not running for political. I don't have any political aspirations. That's right. I'm not a politician. I speak my mind. Yes, sir. I say what I need to say. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm boss. I'm boss. Some have collected water. Some have started petitions. Some have gone to Lansing. Some have been on TV. Some just prayed about it. But if you did something, you are a leader. You ought to clap your hands for every leader, every elected official, every pastor, even the water boy. Yeah. Yes. Instead of being crabs in the bucket, okay. instead of us seeing one person doing something and we get jealous. That's right. We need to start right. grabbing each other by the hand and pulling each other up. Focus is important. Maintaining our focus. 
Now, what has happened here is a byproduct of a failed experiment called the Emergency Management Law. Governor right. right. Snyder did not only ordain and sign this poor legislation into law once, mm -hmm. but he did it twice. Yes. Yes. He did it against the will of every Michigander in the state of Michigan right. after it was voted down. Yes. And they, well, he got paid for it or not, but he did it twice. And these unilateral decisions with these dictators that come into communities like Pontiac, Detroit, Bitter yeah. Harbor, Flint, uh, these are the poor uh, decision making of this, this, this law. And so Governor Snyder, this law is firmly at, at, the, at his feet. We have been impacted severely here, and this should never happen in any American city where right. our community, yeah. the community is right. poisoned oh, by its water. Right. Thank you, people who are steadfast in this fight. You all, Bethel, uh, Bethel Church, uh, United Methodist Church, the place that we sit here, has always opened this door and been very welcoming to us. <laughs> where we are now did not just start today. It started back in 2012, putting us on this road to disaster. And thanks to Rachel Maddow, MSNBC, and others. All right, uh, yep. Okay? Bill Phelps has introduced the bill that when they falsify 
public documents. When they can only falsify the public documents, what should happen to them? Yeah. That's what Mr. Phelps has introduced. Now, we know that we need to come Now, also, we do know this. Let me get your attention because this is a very important part of what we need to do with our next steps. We do know that we have been exposed to lead. We do know our children have been exposed to lead. We do know that we're going to have to fight through that uh, in the future with our children. Uh, anemia, ADD, attention deficit disorder, uh, different things our children are going to be faced with. When, we, when those kids engage the, the uh, institutions of education, our, our public school system, our public school system are going to be left with the charge of trying to educate these children. Now, let's not get it wrong. These people are still going to have productive lives. So we have to be able to educate them appropriately. And it's going to take dollars and cents to get these children educated. I call for the governor to forgive the debt of the Flint Public School. dollars so they can build the infrastructure to educate those young people so they won't just give them more drugs. Put them in the special ed classroom. Let them get them to be a good school. We need to make sure these people have an opportunity to have a life moving forward. So I need all of you with me and my colleagues in Lansing to call for him to forgive those loans. They're due us. They're due us. So without further ado, I'm going to give it to Reverend Bullock. He's going to talk about the, the, the mobilization effort that we're going to have. But I need all of my warriors out there. I need all of you uh, to, to make it make sure, if you can make it to Lansing on next Thursday, to do so. If you can't make it, if you can't make it, call. If you can't call, email. If you, if you know somebody with email or cell phone, tell them about the information. All of you are not listening to the war. You are the new army for the city of Flint. Give yourself another round. Disseminate some of this, 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 this product that is needed for waters for families, and, and I have to give it to my wife. I've never seen anybody wash collard greens in a sink with bottled water, but she was successful in doing so this past holiday. So we know this can be a costly factor for us all, but water is being delivered to all fire stations inside the city of Flint for pickup, and it's going to be many more uh, sites where you can pick up bottled water. Now we do know when we say pick it up, everybody's not able, everybody's not has a car. So all of you as the warriors, you're going to have to make sure if your neighbor, your friend, your sister, your brother, if they can't do it, we have to do it for them. Right. Well, they're, they're here with the living, but they, but they need water today, Tony. They need it today. They need it right now. And so all of us have to make sure we are our brother's keeper. Am I right? Yeah. Now, I, I do have a few water filters on hand, and we do have a few cases of water, but we want to make sure that those individuals that cannot get out to any other place that may be here today, gets that water first. Okay, so we want to make sure they get that water first. But if you need a filter, Candace will take your name. We'll get what we have to you today. We'll make sure you know about the locations where they are. For all of you who are li and listening to the Army, if you want the, the core knowledge, the history of what has happened inside the city of Flint, we have it here if you want. The, the contact numbers for the bills and everything else that needs to happen, uh, we will have that information for you. And don't be mistaken. Emergency manager rules still applies to the city of Flint, Detroit, Ben Harbor, all of the places that they take over. What, what they have now is called a transitional advisory board and a city administrator that's left with the executive orders of the emergency manager, which is the grandchild of Governor Snyder. Now also, I'm going to be caught. Can you guys keep a secret? Yeah. I'm going to tell it. I've asked, I asked Governor Snyder and the rest of his individuals to pick, up a, to pick up the tab for the city administrator, which makes $145,000 a year. Not only $145,000 in salary, but they get a $6,000 car allowance and a $1,200 cell phone allowance. Which, which a contract was signed with the city of Flint, putting all of our taxpaying citizens on the line for that. So I'm asking the governor to pick up the tab for the remnants that he's left here in this community. So these are our next steps. These are our next fights. These are our next challenges. If we stand together, if we fight together, if we work together, we win together. Then, Barack, before you come to the you want to say anything to the people? Yeah, that was great. <laughs>
I would be uh, remiss if I didn't say just a couple of things, especially about Arthur Woodson right now and, and him uh, and the work that he's been doing. But I, there's, there's a lot of credit that a lot of people don't know because sometimes, you know, you, if the, you send out a press release and you try to get something out and it's just hard to get it out. But we, we were, boy, so several months ago, I heard from somebody that wanted to stay uh, confidential on something, somebody that didn't want to be outed, didn't want to lose a job, but I heard that there might be some issues that we needed to look into and we needed to FOIA some documents, and this was just shortly before the lead story started to break with Virginia Tech professor Mark Edwards, and we sent in these FOIA requests looking for these documents, and they fought us. They said that they weren't going to give us documents. Then they said that there wasn't any documents, and I had to, you know, I had to go lawyer up. I had to get attorneys to help bring these documents and put some shuts on them. And even with the attorneys, they started saying that they they weren't they didn't have any of these documents. So I, the only thing I knew, the next step, I had to go to the media because we had to keep fighting this because I really thought that there was documents out there. And after I went to the media. Arthur Woodson called me, and I had never met Arthur before then, but he had a couple of documents that he had got a year, year and a half before when they didn't realize that how bad that they had made the situation, and they were still releasing a, a few documents here and there. And I took those documents, and one of those documents had word for word what we were all looking for in my All summer. right! And so even though those are only maybe 20 or 30 pages worth of documents, Arthur Woodson spurred the legal status that my attorneys needed to start hammering the DEQ, the state's attorney general, the Department of Treasury in the city of Flint that was under emergency management, to turn over those documents. And then just about three or four weeks ago, because they had to honor my FOIA request, they had to honor the one that Mark Edwards was doing, the one that UC, or the uh, ACLU was doing, and just the, when they said they had no documents for me, they turned over over 10,000 pages of documents. Wow. Just one little thing can spark another. One little action can start an avalanche. And that's exactly what happened here. And I'm glad that everybody is staying on top of this. And I'm glad that I've got a partner in Lansing, Sheldon Neely. He, day one of January last year when we got sworn in, this story popped up with the PTA Tim, and he was on it. He had fire on him, and I was excited that we had somebody that we were going to be able to work together and get some stuff done. And I know that I'm, I'm painting a rosy picture here right now of something that happened that was very bad for the community. But everybody here, we stay positive. We work together. And just those little things that start to spark. And that little spark starts to fire. And we keep growing and growing. We're going to take care of each other. And, you know, everybody's concerns about, you know, when these water bottles are going to get out. Well, they done messed up. They gave Sheldon their phone number. So I don't know if you guys know Sheldon, but if he wants to get a hold of you, he's, he's not going to let go. So I um, just... I'll stay here and answer any questions you guys might have after this thing goes around, and I'd like to turn it back over to Sheldon. Thank you all. We will have, we will have uh, those water filters for people uh, tonight, right now, today. If you need some help, if you know somebody needs some help, I just need to get your signature on something. And if you don't want to get your signature, it's not going to stop me from getting you a filter to protect your family. If you need water, we have a few cases, and we have more cases outside. Uh, we want to make sure that you stay focused on this. Keep your attention focused firmly on what's happening this fall at Governor Snyder's feet. This fall is right at his feet. Let's not get him off the hook. Let's keep the pressure on the Republican Party to give us our best duty. This is a tragedy, and he has to own it. He has to own it. I'm going to turn this up. I'm, I'm, I think it's been a change in the agenda. I, I wanted to stay on point to keep you guys here to keep you focused. But I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Woodson. I'll get the back uh, for you guys while, while I still have enough copies, but I do have it electronically. I will give these out to you. What's the next steps for our, our mobilization in Lansing? Thank you all for your attention. Thank you all for your courage. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, the chronology you can 
email me at my office at sheldon.neely government uh, Candace, what is my emails? <laughs> Sheldon Neely at house.mi.gov. I have cards. She has cards. Yeah. Forgive me for not doing that email. <laughs> she handles all of that. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
last month was $3,000. After receiving a $10,000 water bill. That water bill was not for using water. That water bill was for sewage. Because the Detroit Water and Sewage Department sued the city of Highland Park. And so they wanted to get their money from us to pay the settlement. Now last time I checked, okay. that was my fault. All right. So it's not just high water bills in Flint, it's high water bills along the whole I-75 corridor. If we're going to win that issue, you can't just fight for Flint. You got to fight for fair water prices for everybody. That's right. What is this thing called the three-fifth compromise? 
gonna make a statement next week. What's gonna happen is Rachel Maddow is gonna move on to North Korea. That's what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen is Cher is gonna move on to whatever she's moving on to. What's gonna happen is Mikey Moore is gonna tweet about something else. The news, local, national, will cover some other story. And we will be left with nothing. So if we want justice, we have to stand up and demand it for ourselves. Why can't we? Flint Mission. Why not? Our voices. Our voices.
WFOB. What would happen if we... WFOB. How many times have I said... I've got the solution. Not everybody's bad. Why it's can't we work together? WFOB. Our voices. Our voices. WFOB. You know what the problem is? I heard a guy on the radio yet. There's other communities. Our voices. I like to hear it. WFOB. I heard... WFOB. What? WFOV. Our voices. 259 978 Flint's newest radio Our station. Voices. Located right here in Flint, Michigan. The Our Good voices. News Radio. If you're interested in getting involved, having your Our own voices. show, or just supporting the station, give us a call at 259 9789. That's 259 9789. It's station. Our Voices. Located right here in Flint, Michigan. The Good News Radio. If you're interested in getting involved, having your own show, or just supporting the station, Give us a call at 259-978. I knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science, become the mayor or something, make the situation better for other people. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend.